Technically you. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to episode 18 of SEO Fight Club. We have to pull a uh, topic bait and switch on you. We promised a surprise guest, but uh, due to scheduling issues, we have to reschedule that to a future show. Yeah. So surprise, you didn't show up. <laughs> So today we this will be a running gag actually. Next week we've got <laughs> Rand Fishkin coming on. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Great way to get people to show up. Uh, <laughs> so today we're going to do an impromptu ask me anything. You can ask any of us uh, or all of us uh, any questions you want, uh, whatever your heart desires. Just go ahead and uh, let us know, and we'll have uh, Clint uh, monitoring the general questions, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, but to start, let's go ahead and do some housekeeping. So we are SEO Fight Club. If you want to learn about us a little bit more, you can visit uh, that uh, domain and, and see our bios. We won't bore you with those details. Uh, Clint also runs SEO This Week, which is an awesome resource uh, about uh, the latest news in our industry. And Clint goes through hundreds of articles every week and boils it down to about the uh, five or so that uh, uh, people will probably be most interested in. Um, are you guys able to see my slides okay? I'm checking it now. I can see them. Great way to get people to show up. All right. So assuming that the video is okay. Yeah, the video is good. Okay. So SEO this week, Clint uh, looks at hundreds of articles, narrows it down to five or so of the most important, and then gives you a summary. Sometimes he has guests on. It's a really valuable resource. If you pour through a lot of SEO uh, journalism and blogs, then this is a huge time saver. You can reclaim all that time by letting Clint do all the hard work for you of getting through the crap. Clint, what can people expect? Uh, this week, we uh, just have a lot of conversation piece articles. One good one is uh, from Doug Cumming Cunningham. Pretty sure I got his name right on a Amazon affiliate program and, you know, surviving one of their audits. And then we talk about SEO myths. Awesome. Is that the uh, the new Google SEO myth busting show? Yeah. The, the <laughs> bait and switch. <laughs> So Kyle, what did you think of that show? Um, it didn't. I have they had episode two. No, I just, haven't seen it. Just episode one. Yeah, just episode one. Yeah, what amazed me was in the comment section how they said, um, like people were pissed off and they were like, "Hey, I thought this was supposed to be myth busting." And they're like, "Don't worry, this is just SEO one hundred and one. We'll get into more technical things later." But the idea is that if you know an SEO myth, that means you know some SEO, right? Uh, so SEO myth 101 should have been how to bust myths or uh, how to spot them. You know, that, that would be a 101, like, so this is how we, we identify what a myth is and then this is the, the process that we go through to bust it. Not teaching real low level SEO. That, that, yeah. the, the name of the show and the content didn't match at all. Yeah, and you know, I didn't even think uh, that like as an SEO 101 uh, show, it was named properly. It was really remedial SEO. They're like, "What is a search engine?" Right. What is a search I heard engine? This word crawling is that a thing? These and, are myths. <clears throat> and search you, engines are real. Yeah. If you said those things to like a client, you'd be on the fast track to getting fired. And Chad, I think your point about these guys have actually never done SEO. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing is now they have a credibility problem. The myth is these guys know how to get a locksmith in Tallahassee to page one at Google. Show us some proof. <laughs> yeah, the myth is that they actually do SEO. So, Busted. The, 
so the question is now, do these guys have the credentials? And so they need to start showing us some serious SEO chops, chops. you know, because I, I have doubts. Well, at one point in the video, the guy was like, so what are the three things I need to be focused on? And the Busters, uh, I assume that's his name, Buster, right? Um, he goes, I, I know that you're um, like a, a a builder or a technical guy, so you want me to give you platforms or something like that. And I'm like, that's the weirdest answer I've ever heard. Like nobody says like, what are the three things I should do? And the, the answer they're expecting is what platform they should build their site in. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it was such a weird disconnect on, on well, that I, question to that answer. Well, it, it was too scripted and the people that they had, it shouldn't, you know, if they were going to do a one-on-one kind of thing and make it that way, legit go out and find someone who doesn't do SEO so that they don't come off as disingenuous. So having a developer come in and pretend that they don't know anything about SEO was dumb. And you can, it was <laughs> so blatantly disingenuous right off from the beginning. It was almost insulting. I totally agree. They, they could, I mean, any client, um, you know, prospective client talk that you have with somebody, uh, would have been much more authentic because they would have actually had the questions that, that actually do come up mm -hmm. because they've done a little bit of research and they have like, like this much knowledge. I've heard this and heard that. And they have questions. They could have walked outside and grabbed just, you know, somebody at a local business and pulled them in. Yeah. It would have a much better show. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have gotten a disgruntled website owner yeah. who was pissed off at SEOs. I used and, to rank on the page one page one of Google, and now I don't. And so I was told or, all this stuff. Like, or that, worse, that would, that would yeah, yeah I, I hired this SEO, and he said X, and I got Y as a result. Tell me about it. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> they could have done anything, really. It, it seems like they didn't even try. But, you know, hopefully they took the feedback to heart, and their episode two will be on point. Strikes me as unlikely because I feel like they've already, as Clint said, they've already scripted all of these out. <laughs> they know all their episodes. Yeah, they already know where they're going, and it's just, you know we'll get SEO 102 next week. Yeah. Well, they're they're going to get a lot of hate if they do that. And uh, you know what what was really funny was uh, Josh's Mystery Science Theater 3000 roasting of the MythBuster Myth episode. <laughs> Got to give Josh some kudos on doing that. Because not only was it hilarious, it was really on point. You know, if they're not going to take it seriously, then we should not take them seriously. Oh, look who showed up. Man, you guys got something to counter, but I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right on. I guess we're going to do a uh, take back on the topic bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going I'm to I'm uh, join a conference. I'm, I'm in our uh, Philly office today. Continue. Listen. All right. So we're back on track. So I'm on the uh, it's too late slide again. So our Skype group is full. Uh, we hit capacity. So if you wanted to get in, your only option to get in is to join the wait list. And it's available at uh, the Page Optimizer Pro website as well as the SEO Tool Lab website. So hop on the uh, wait list and we'll process it in order. So as people uh, leave, we'll add the next people in. And of course, uh, we are working on a solution to let uh, a lot more people in and we'll email the list to let you know when that's available. And I think actually, um, Ted, uh, you and I have a meeting later this week about, I think we'll be able to give people on the next Fight Club a real firm date on uh, when the new platform will launch. Yep. So, yay. <laughs> no oh, more yeah. Skype. A, a lot of announcements uh, next week. Yeah. <clears throat> well, excellent. How you doing, Ryan? Hold on. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you can. I'm great. How you guys doing? I'm up here in um, Philadelphia at our headquarter office for our agency, so it's been a bit of a crazy few days. I apologize for being late. I always run on Miami time, so that's expected. <laughs> how, are, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. We're glad to have you on. 
Yeah, thank you for coming here. We were scrambling into yeah, our, uh, our uh, just ask us anything mode. <laughs> so did you uh, prepare slides? Should I give you control of the screen or? I have, no slides. Talk? I, have no, I have no slides, man. I apologize. Okay, no worries. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I think talk, between though. the three of us in the audience, we can come up with a lot of cool questions. Absolutely. So uh, from my perspective, like I've always hired employees. Like I've always like had like, a C Corp or something of that nature hired full-time employees. And uh, Kyle mentioned that like you're an expert at hiring VAs for doing SEO sure. within an agency. Uh, can you tell us about what some of the pros and cons of both routes are? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think <clears throat> when you're first getting started, it's mostly pros just because SEO, um, regardless of all the amazing software that's out there, it's still a very laborious process. Um, you still need a human on the other end to run that software. Um, so there's man hours involved, no matter what, right? Um, and as you grow and as you take more clients, you need help. And a lot of the times, especially when you're first getting started, your retainers are not big enough to hire local people. Um, so your only other option is pretty much to offshore. So when I was first getting started, I lived. Uh, my agency thrived off of building processes, hiring people off of Upwork, sometimes even Fiverr, depending on the task, um, and basically giving them a microscopic part of that process. So for example, Instead of going out and hiring somebody for uh, to do like SEO as an SEO expert, I would hire people to do a specific part of the process, a very specific part of the keyword research process, a very specific part of the technical audit process, a very specific part of the link outreach process. Um, I would never go out and hire somebody who claimed to be an SEO expert because we all know how that is. Um, they may know SEO, but they don't know SEO the way that I want them to know SEO. So. Um, you can mitigate that risk in terms of like, the knowledge gap by giving them, number one, a, a well-defined process, and number two, um, a hyper-specific part of that process. When you um, say hyper-specific, how hyper-specific is that? Yeah, so I think I think the best example is, is probably link building. That was how I first started my making like real money as an agency. Um, so I broke that down into three parts. Strategy, uh, which to me, Strategy should always come from a local person. Anything st strategic in communication should always be done in-house. Um, if you're first getting started, unfortunately, that means you. So that was me. I did the strategy. Strategy meaning, okay, I have an attorney client. I have an e-commerce client. What are the link types that we should be targeting, right? Is it a guest post? Is it a product review? Uh, is it a broken link building campaign? Whatever that may be. So I would build that strategy, and then I would cascade that down to the next step in the process, which is prospecting. So somebody then has to go out and find those links and I oh, I've always done outreach. I did PBNs for a while, but um, I found it to be more work than doing outreach at a certain point, just as managing the mains, et cetera, et cetera. So I turned to outreach and uh, you know developed this very simple process strategy, prospecting, outreach, and then within outreach is kind of just like project management and consistent follow-up. So um, the prospecting part is one hundred percent still done with our agency now that does um, probably like 1.2 million of revenue through link outreach. Prospecting is still done um, by our small team in the Philippines. Um, so prospecting is basically just going out, scraping, uh, like we do We do a lot of scraping up from, uh, from Instagram now because I find that a lot of Google um, search uh, operators are a little bit spammed out per, per se. Um, I think actually a lot of like PBN vendors got smart and instead of calling them PBNs, they just started putting up like a right for us page on their website. So that way, like a lot of SEO professionals who start, who have gradually turned to outreach, especially guest posting, um, has kind of become like the new PBN. So we've turned a lot to Instagram and we're trying to find influencers uh, or basically anyone with a blog link in their URL. It tends to work a lot better because those influencers um, are, are trying to monetize the attention from Instagram, not from their blogs. They started a blog because like someone told them to be a good idea, but generally um, that's not their main focus. So we can generally get either like a post or a link insertion for under hundred bucks when we do it that way. And also the market is just a lot wider open and we're not, those sites aren't bogged down with like hundreds of other SEO links that are already on it. So prospecting still is done uh, by our small team overseas. Outreach then too, we use Pitchbox. 
Pitchbox is an amazing, incredible tool, especially if you're doing outreach at scale. Uh, but within that, somebody still has to manage the responses, right? So our strategists will kind of like oversee the use of the tool. We have two junior strategists now in house here too. Um, that will manage the overseeing and the usage of Pitchbox, make sure things are firing, open rates, all that stuff, managing the pitch templates. But underneath that, we have a series, uh, I think five now, we call outreach managers. So those outreach managers are solely responsible for managing those Gmail accounts. Um, and even within that, we have a divine process for can responses that come off the back of it. So for example, if there's a guest post pitch campaign going out, um, you pretty much know the responses that are going to go back. So again, by having these like well-defined processes and then sub processes and being able to, I guess in a sense, predict what's coming, you can mitigate that risk. And whenever you're mitigating that risk, that means you can hire less and less experienced people. So uh, as opposed to having to go out and hire an outreach manager who's American, who's local, who's fluent in English, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. At like 20 bucks an hour, we'll able, we're able to go down and get offshore people in the Philippines who speak very good English, uh, but just need a little bit more direction and grammar correction. Uh, and we'll do that through canned responses. And then, of course, we'll show just continuous training over time. Uh, and then the layer that sits on top of that is project management. That's all in-house now and local. So um, link building is still an example of something that's like a very well-defined process that runs really well, especially uh, with the use of offshore labor. And I think that, you know, as we've grown now, Again, I'm up here in Philadelphia. We have a total of, I think, like 30, 35 people total local in office between Miami and Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, we've lessened the use of offshore people just because our rates have raised so much and a client expects, um, you know, a lot more hand-holding consulting type deals. Um, but we still leverage a lot of offshore talent. I actually was out of work today hiring um, a designer to help us out with some spot work within the agency because we need help building more pages for the agency website. Um, and it doesn't make sense for us right now to go out and hire a full-time staff locally um, designer at like 60K to just manage our website. Um, so I'm going to to find some, some, some low-cost designers. But even within that, like we're not, I'm not going to them being like, hey, build us a new website. We have brand guidelines done. We've got page templates done in Sketch and Photoshop already. Um, I've done some like mock-ups and stuff um, for what I want them to work off. They're basically just taking that strategic, um, you know, brand visualization and applying it to the mockups that we're doing. Um, so it, it really applies to any aspect of business, um, but you can't just go and be like, build me a website or like do SEO because they're going to do it in default to how they know it and it's never going to be up to your expectations. So you have to put in the time up front. It's like Pareto's principle in reverse, but you put in the time up front to lessen your time on the back end. Um, and you know the pros and cons of that are obviously it's cheaper. Um, the con is though is that you have a lot more headaches and you have to do a lot more hand holding up front. Um, another con is time difference. You know what I'm saying? Communication zones, all that stuff. But um, once you get a VA, and you guys can probably nod your head and test this, that once you guys find a VA that you've trained, they've been with you for a few years, they're like part of the family, man. They're not going anywhere uh, because they become integral. Um, kind of like a piece of software almost to, to, to how your business runs. I mean, I have two WordPress devs that have been with me for five years. In the analytics guide, it's been three and a half years now. Outreach people shit like almost seven years, you know, they're managed by the agency. But um, yeah, so I mean, they're integral to, to, to how my business started, grow, grew, and then we tapered off and started hiring more locally, as I said. I mean, that should be the goal of every agency, agency is to raise your prices at some point. <laughs> Uh, because you're ultimately doing the same amount of work for a $500 retainer as a $50,000 retainer in some sense. So, um, and to do that, you have to get really smart local people, but um, those processes still apply to them as well. They're still following the same processes. They're just doing a lot more. Do you, do you have a today. guide on, on how to grow? Like um, how, how big your retainer should be to um, support or like, like, yeah. how, like, how can you scale or, or how do you know when to scale, I guess might be the question. In, ter in terms of how do you make the switch between offshore and local? Or, or even just growing more offshore. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, have a, I have a really good guide in my personal blog about how to offshore and like how the processes, how to communicate with them, all that stuff. It's on Ryan was here, just you know, off, how, to, how to offshore agency stuff. But it's really tough to answer that because every agency is so different and the economics are so different. Um, like it's really kind of more of just like a pulse thing. I actually have a really cool thing now that we, that me and my other business partners built, which is kind of like a staff utilization track that we built based on your project plan. So what we do is we build a project plan that uses hours and then it will tell you based on the staff that you have on board, what their utilization rate is, whether you need to hire, um, at what point, like in terms of profitability that 
uh, you can afford to hire based on your pipe, like based on your all sorts of stuff. So um, I don't have a direct answer for that. Sometimes, you know, I, in my opinion too, when the agencies that make it and those that don't, like you have to develop, we all got into this game because we fell in love with SEO and the process and the competition. But at some point you have to flip from being a marketer to, to running a business and flipping that business mindset. And a lot of that, um, I, it's not like natural, but it's something that you have to have a pulse on for your business. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a tough question to answer because it, it depends on how you run your agency, how you're pricing your services, um, and what you want out of your agency too. My initial agency web to me was more of a lifestyle business than anything. I didn't want to get past a million. I didn't really want to get past six or seven employees. I just wanted to run a highly profitable agency that I was able to take out, you know, 500 K a year, uh, in, in liquid profit and push that into other avenues like tools, like trainings. Um, so to basically use that as my own invest seed investment to do, to do other stuff. I eventually sold the agency and now we have, which is exploding in terms of size and people. That's a whole nother thing. But, um, so it, it depends on your goals for what you want out of your business as well. You know what I mean? So when you're, uh, interviewing a, uh, a VA to hire, are there certain things you look for in a VA that you wouldn't want to hire? So if we're talking specifically SEO, um, I know it's hard. Like if it's a local person, of course, there's, there's different personality things you look for. Um, but again, I mean, like, it, like I wouldn't call myself an expert in hiring. It's, it's more just, I've been through it so many times that I kind of know what to expect. Like it's VAs, it's so much trial and error, honestly. Like you, you go through 10 bad ones and you're pulling your hair out before you find one that you're like, this is what I've been waiting for. Um, and it's really tough with interview questions, especially for people overseas, because they all lie on, on what they have, you know? Um, they're copy and pasting from other places. So like, again, it's it's really more up to, to, to us as the hirers to give them the proper sandbox and framework to play in. So what I do now a lot of is, um, if I'm hiring like design is, is, is one of them, I actually hired four designers because I gave them a test and I'm willing to pay, you know, hundred bucks per test to kind of weed out the one that the ones that we don't want. So I'll just build like a basic Google doc. I'll put in, you know, a couple bullet points for what I'm expecting for what I'm looking for. Um, you know, a link to the files that they need brand guidelines, same thing with SEO, right? I mean, you can give them different tests. You can have them run like a basic audit, um, all sorts of different. I do that a lot for SEO. I used to do a lot for SEO. We don't hire too many uh, SEO people offshore anymore. Um, but I would basically have like a sample, like I, I call it a top 10, but I would give them a top five. When I, when I say that is I would be like, here's, um, you know, a, a client website, give me five things that you, five opportunities and areas for improvement. Um, and these are the things I'm looking for. I'm, I want something with content. I want something with like link opportunities. I want something, um, with technical opportunities, just kind of like see and test what their, their bandwidth and scope is. Um, and if they did something really well, like if they were able to be like, oh, like this competitor is, has these three pieces of content that are doing really well, then I know um, a little bit more where they're stronger at and I can kind of maybe push them towards that part of the process. Again, I'm not hiring anyone for end-to-end -end SEO, but um, you need to have some sort of, like your hiring process needs to have a test in it and you need to be willing to pay for that test. Um, because if not, you're just going to hire them and you're going to give them something, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to probably yell at them and they're going to just, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a never ending cycle. So I strongly suggest uh, putting together like a dummy or a sandbox test environment for them to do some work um, in where you can have like iterative feedback with them, test their communication skills, test their deadline skills, like all these things um, that you can't get from interview questions, especially on Upwork where they're just copy and pasting stuff over and over. So. What was the point where you were building your agency and you're like, I need help. I need the, at what point how long did it take you to come to the realization that you couldn't do yeah. everything you had to start paying people to do stuff um i mean like there, there there's phases of that you know what i'm saying like at first not very long probably like after two clients where i was just like i just don't like you know project management it was not really something that came naturally to me uh, so I knew right away that I wanted to get help. I just couldn't find someone that I could afford. So I ended up like going the other way and hiring for service delivery offshore. Um, but you learn pretty quickly. I mean, and, and, and I think like the real underlying question of that is when, when did I, when did I know that I had to pull myself completely out of the business and how did I do that? Because that is kind of like the main thing. It's not so much like I need help. We all know that we need help. Um, under, I think understanding what that first trigger point is, is, is really more about just like, 
are you still enjoying what you're doing? Like if you love doing SEO nonstop and you want to work 14 hours a day, like do it, bro. You know, be get a hundred percent profit. You know what I mean? Do it that way. But for me, I came in, like I said, I knew what my goal was for that business. It was never to work with clients long term. It was to build a honey by cash that I could take. Um, not never take for myself, but take it like monopoly money and spend it on other things. So with that in mind, I knew that I had to scale quickly and I knew that I had to scale profitably. So I knew early on that I was going to be using um, offshore VAs. But realistically, when I fully realized that, it was probably when I made my second local hire and I knew that I had to start building a local team if I really wanted to get to where I am. Can you see my, my um, I just realized you can't see me. Can, can I just cut up my video? Sorry. Can you guys see me on video? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, I thought I was talking. I see a blank screen on my thing. Um, but I, I think that I think that's the real big question for a lot of um, SEOs, especially because we get so used to doing it our way, and like it's really hard to pull ourselves out of the every part of the business. I mean, it starts with like why like you can't be doing technical audits and selling and managing finance. Like, it, it, there's just there's so much to do within an agency. That's what I'm talking about. Like you learn pretty quickly or you have to learn or you don't you like you either stay a consultant you can have a team and still be a consultant but until you pull yourself completely out of the service delivery side of the business and you have basically someone who's like kind of managing your operations and service delivery um to me you're, you're still a consultant and that was kind of like the business knowledge and acumen that i was talking about before that i didn't have um but i just realized like i just had a couple of personal things that were happening like my relationship fell apart after four years because i was working so much um you know, just having some some health things that were going on. I mean, I just realized that I just couldn't physically do it anymore. And I was burning the candle at both ends and it was having a negative impact on my life. And as much as I love my business, I wasn't trying to, you know, be doing the same thing for the next 20 years and having absolutely no life. So that was the point for me. It was around like probably like 12 to 15 clients. And we were probably doing like, I don't know, like 40,000 a month um, that I realized I had to get myself out of the service delivery side of the business. And that was when I really started looking at hiring people locally and building a team and transferring my, as much knowledge to my, from myself to them. And it, oh, at that point, it became all about them. And like our agency now, it's funny. Um, like I said, I, I'm up here probably like every other month or twice a quarter. And um, it's not about me and it's not about my the CEO and my partner. It's not about us and like what we know. It's 100% about them now and what they know. Um, and their happiness and keeping them here. It's just, it's so much different than um, when I first got started, when it was all about like, I need that first place ranking. Now it's like, you know, you realize that those those things kind of come and go. Um, and it's really about managing them and keeping them happy and making sure that you have the best team possible because they're ultimately my product uh, and a representation, representation of us in our business and they're going to make us successful or not. And that's really it. <laughs> Do you ever miss the service delivery side? Like I know for a lot of SEOs, that's kind of the job they signed up for and the business management uh, kind of feels like the switcheroo. No, at all. I don't miss it at all. Like I, uh, you know, I've launched a few new businesses. I've like the blueprint training. I have some software that I'm getting around launching. Um, you know, I had this conversation with my partner yesterday over, over dinner and drinks where I was talking about like, so, we have to on our new website we have like 50 service pages that we want to stand up they need like seo they need like on page any titles and i'm like i i like i i like i know you want me to do it but like i sit down on my computer and i physically cannot do it my brain will absolutely not let me do the seo anymore because i know it is 150 million percent not a good use of my time at all like i'm literally taking money out of my own pocket if i'm doing the seo still um that is what's a, like kind of the realization that you what, what what Clint was kind of driving at too is you realize the true value of your time as you grow. I didn't start like that. I didn't come with that entitlement. I don't want to sound entitled by saying that now, but you know, I have four businesses. I have 50 employees across all my companies. If I'm still doing the work or even wanting to do that type of work, then I'm taking a step backwards. Do you know what I mean? Um, to me, this was never about SEO. Like I could give a shit about SEO and Google. I don't even consider myself an SEO anymore. Like I really consider myself more of a, 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 a like I, if, if you give me $50,000 start a business, I wouldn't put a dollar of it into SEO, not a dollar of it. And not until though, not until I was ready. I would be advertising, I would be building content and advertising nonstop. It is the fastest way to grow a business. SEO will come in the long term because I know how to frame a website and the content for it to rank over time. But I'm not like coming out of the gate being like, I need to do on page. I need to do links. Like, no, I'm building pages for conversion. I'm driving profitable traffic to it right away. 
And then over time, my traffic will pick up and, you know, and that's what it is. But so I don't miss doing the SEO anymore. What I'm really passionate about is, is building, starting, scaling and growing businesses and the business side of that and making decisions and, and working for myself and not having anyone sit over my shoulder. So that wasn't what initially attracted me to SEO was not about um, the actual practice of SEO, but what it can do for us and what it can do for our lives and what it can do for a business. Um, and it is I, like I still love SEO. I didn't mean to come off like I was talking shit, but like it's an amazing service and an amazing business to run. Um, and I love it and I'm forever grateful for it, but like, I don't miss. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask, uh, how, how do you reconcile that with the marketing message you give your clients? <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. So like when I sold my agency, um, I stepped away from operations completely. Um, and I think also that the type of clients that, that I, like I do bring clients to the table, but the type of clients that I want to work with, they're on the same mindset as myself. Like I, I would never sign a client who's going to be busting my team's balls about a, a first place Q and ranking ever. You know, like I, what I do now and what my core skill set is, is solving marketing problems. Um, whether that's SEO, whether that's advertising, whether that's content or just coming in and seeing the holistic picture um, and helping solve that problem of marketing. And SEO is a big facet of that. It always will be. Um, but the clients that I track now, I mean, I, I, I am who I am. I can't like I, I can't go out and lie and continue to, to not lie, but just like put on a face for that. Like, it's just not who I am. It's not what I'm thinking about. Like, I'm able to create so much content because it's, it's a stream of consciousness. It's not planned. If I have to sit down and plan it, then it doesn't come off as effective. Um, so I'm talking about what I'm doing. I'm talking about what I know. And SEO is a part of that for sure. Um, but it's also bigger than that. Like, to me, um, I want to solve business problems and marketing problems, not just come in and be pigeonholed to just do SEO. Because again, I'm not getting as much money. Like I can get a $50,000 SEO retainer, which is great, but I want the whole pie. I want the $500,000 marketing retainer. Um, and also the business consulting side of things. Like I want to ingrain myself and my team within your business so you can't let us go. Not just because an algorithm came around and changed your keyword rank because you fire us and you want to go to the next hot thing. Um, so my clients that I work with know that, um, and uh, that's where our agency's trying to go anyways. I mean, we're always trying to take one step up, one step on, one step up. Yes, SEO still makes up 75% of our revenue, but in five years, if, if SEO still makes up 5% of our, 75% of our revenue, then I'm failing my employees because we're not selling in the right type of contracts. That's my opinion. <laughs> when you transition from the VA to in-house staff, did you did you just go like freelancers in-house staff or did you start taking on the whole? Yeah, great question. Yeah, they were all 1099s. Actually, when I sold my agency all my, so I had nine people locally in Miami with us and they were all 1099s. And they were 1099s. I tried to flip them in all fairness. They were 1099s because they're all under 25 and they chose to be. Like they didn't really care to have insurance. They were like, wait a second. You mean if you're going to pay me 50,000 bucks, I'm going to get all the 50,000 bucks? Not like, so they didn't fully understand the taxes um, side of it. In all fairness, too, if anyone's listening to this, that's actually not the right way to do it because if you're 1099 full, full time employees, you can hit some potential legal issues. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but yeah, they were all 1099s. And then when, when we merged uh, Weber's and From the Future about a year and a half ago, we flipped them over. And now, um, we use 1099s and contractors as stop gaps. So like, for example, if we sign a new, if we sign a really big contract, um, and our project and account team is like, we don't have the bandwidth to deliver this, then we'll go out and we'll bring in the contractor and we're willing to pay that premium for that person too. Like, we're not going out and trying to get like a cheap contractor to fill in and learn. Like we need somebody who's coming in like an expert in what they do. We'll pay the premium for that rate. Um, and if they're really good, we'll try and flip them full time. If not, then. You know, we just try and be as profitable as, as we can on that seat, on that contract. Um, but to get started, like my first employees were definitely 1099. It's just so much easier, you know, like you don't have to deal with as much paperwork, um, the benefits, all that stuff. Uh, and they know that, too. Most most people don't really have a problem being a 1099 as long as you kind of like guide them to the fact that, like, you're going to have to pay taxes. I'm not going to pay it for you. Um, but it's never it was never a problem for us at that point, especially if you're a startup, you know, it's just like, look, dude, this is just me. Um, I'm going to pay you a full salary, but I can't give you full time right now. You're going to be here every day, but, um, you know, you're going to be basically getting paid 
by the hour. Um, so that was like the, the easiest transition point was VA uh, by hourly and then full time 1099. And then right now we're just at full full benefits, full everything, full full FT. We're trying to attract like the best people possible at this point. Um, and if that means we have to raise our rates to do so, like we're happy to do it because um, that's just where we need to be at this point. Um, with the with the 1099s and now the full time people, I imagine they're more client facing, and I imagine that's why you would you have to get them. Is there is there anything other than like maybe direct client um, communication that uh, you found that a VA staff can't do? Yeah, I mean it's like I would I don't want to sound mean, but like critical thinking. You know what I mean? Like I, I would never give like I said I would never give a VA. Um, and just so we're clear too, when we say VA, we're talking about like less than $8 an hour, not in the United States, um, you know, somewhere in Asia most likely. Um, I would not give them anything that requires them to think about how to do the task. So client, I mean, anything client facing, definitely no. Anything communications based, definitely no. Um, but anything other than that, like even my analytics guy who is fully certified, Beast can do can do everything. Um, even with him, we're still giving him a template to do an analytics audit that we have vetted and approved ahead of time. Like we're not just going to him being like, "Hey, we got a new client. Like review their their GA account and make sure things are firing properly." It's way too much. You know, he would never he would never really be able to kind of like grasp the scope because he's not. It's not his fault. He's not sitting here with us every day. He doesn't know what the client does. Um, he doesn't know anyone on the team. He's just he's. They're, they're basically just like they're doing what you give them that needs to be kind of like laid out for them ahead of time. Otherwise you're setting both parties up for failure. And it's kind of a shame too, because a lot of people do that and they want to blame the country. They want to blame that person when it's really not their fault. It's our fault because imagine if you walked into a situation with no context, you were hired like that offline and it was, you were like given something that's just, the scope is just unimaginable. You're going to do it the only way you know. Uh, and it's not their fault for knowing that which is why I think a lot of offshore talent gets dumped upon um, unfairly, but it's really our fault for not giving them the right, the right framework to do that. So um, yeah. speaking of that framework, um, the, the templates that you're talking about, uh, who wrote those initially for you? Did you do the research and did you write them or did you yeah, find no. like something else or how? I did all that. That was, man. And so like actually all those templates are now live in the blueprint training. They've also all been revisited and automated by my partner, David Krevitt, who's just like a monster when it comes to Google Sheets. Um, but all that stuff was initially done by me. And then one, like a key part of hiring too, and, and something that like, I'm not an expert at hiring local people either. Um, I think again, a lot of it is trial and error training, the culture of your company, like making people feel comfortable, like experience and do other things. But like I, to me, my like perfect employees are the ones that I, I tell them something once, I don't have to repeat myself. And then they take it upon themselves to improve on what I gave them. So like a perfect example is we have this girl here, her name's Maria, she's, she's from Venezuela, she's amazing. Um, I gave her, like she kind of does all of our keyword research now agency-wide and like the templates that I started and gave her and like the SOPs and the processes, like she's taken those and it's because she's doing it every day. She sees the gaps in even what I'm doing. She's it, she improved it like to the point where like, the, I mean, like we're charging like 20 times what we were charging for cute research because of her and her work and her continuous improvement on that. So they were all like, they all do have to be started by the business owner. Again, it's really hard to go to one of your employees, even a full-time employee. Cause you gotta imagine like they're already bogged down with where they, everyone at agencies are overworked. That's just the agency life. So to go to them and be like, hey, like I also need you to document your process and build a template, it's just too much and it's not their responsibility. That stuff has to, to initiate and generate with the business owner or if you have the funding, go out and hire an outside, it's like a, a BPR business process consultant to come in um, and help you out with it. It can be expensive, but honestly, like it's 100% worth it. To me, to get, to get from like that 40K a month to like, 80k, 100k a month. You, that's where the processes really come into play. Because you need to put your head down and, and go out and focus on marketing, business development, generating leads and sales. And if you're stuck, constantly plugging gaps with your service because people are missing things, missing deadlines, not getting the work done right, that's a process error. Point blank. You know. Um, go ahead and plug um your course. You've got the, you've put this together for people. It's a agency in a box sort of a concept, right? 
Yeah, so the, so the blueprint training, um, when I sold Weberest to From the Future, we were doing about 1.1, 1 1.2 in, in revenue. Um, and it was, it was so much of that was because I had built templates and processes for, for all aspects of the SEO process, from client onboarding to queue research to technical audits to some proprietary stuff that we even developed in-house too using the partner who I took on this data credit, um, who's just, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's just like, literally probably like the premier person in the world for look up his channels called coding is for losers um he's just an expert at like understanding how to mash different data together using apis in google sheets and then just amazing stuff but anyways um so we took all of these processes all these templates automated them um and it is basically an agency in a box like the the, the core customer for for what the, the print training is now is that seo consultant who knows seo has a base for it but it's having trouble getting to that next level, hitting that scale, getting to a million in revenue. Um, that's who the blueprint is for. So it's, I think it's like 22 modules now. We're continuously adding more. We've got a private Slack channel for consulting. We do weekly live um, uh, consulting calls just like this where we'll actually have our members come on with a client problem and be like, hey, like I have this attorney and me and Dave will get on a whiteboard and solve it for them live. So we try to in incorporate also like um, some advanced like one-on-one -on -one consulting, group consulting through it as well. But like we push people through the course, they use the templates, um, and then David and I are there to just help them solve any problems that they have. So that's the blueprint dot training. It's, it's going to be going really, really well. Um, and I'm super excited about it. Um, and I'm sorry, the website was blueprint dot training. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I put the link in the chat for everybody. Yeah, Clint, Clint you're in there, correct? Yep, I am. I've actually been using the project management system since you released that under the Webless brand. Nice. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, we implemented that at Over the Top SEO, kind of took what we wanted and kept, you know, but it's just, yeah. it was such a time saver because I didn't have to reinvent that crap for OTT. You know, yeah. so, that, that's, recently. That, that's exactly what it is. Like people like yourself who don't need a full on, like, this is a canonical tag, who like know their shit, who just need a little spark or maybe like a different idea, you know, a different way of thinking about problems. Like I, I, I really do see it as kind of like an agency consulting thing. You don't have to take everything in there, but um, it is expensive. It's 3000 bucks, but I 100% believe that it's, it's underpriced because if you take even just one little thing from that and implement it in your business, you can have just the butterfly effect of tens of thousands of dollars right away. Yeah, David's PM system alone is worth 3K for me. On yeah. It. <laughs> it was a beast, yeah. Yeah, so. When was it, when did you go, hey, I made all this stuff for my agency. What was the thing that said, hey, let me start giving this away? Like the first time you gave something away was your pro your proposals. You were handing those out. And then now all of a sudden, Webris, the information side, and then now the blueprint. What, what triggered that to to want to? You know, like, yeah, I, mean, I, just, I just found that, um, number one, it was a really good way for me to, for, that was kind of like in the beginning, this is probably what, like five years ago now, like the beginning of like content marketing and SEO. Um, and I just saw like a lot of white space there and all I knew how to do was just like, no, like talk about what I was doing. Um, and it was just a really easy way for me to pick up attention in the industry, um, you know, just build relationships and just get my name out there. So it was an, initially a means to generate um, attention, awareness and clients, which helped a lot. Um, but then, of course, over time, what I realized was that most of the stuff that I'm talking about is actually for agencies. Um, and that's when I started like packaging these things up and launching them as one off products. Building, building training is going to around forever. Um, but also, I mean, I just I, I enjoy um, I would much rather work with people like yourself. Um, who are educated and grateful and, um, you know, happy to, 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 to pay what I believe my time is worth, um, as opposed to clients who, you know, fight you tooth and nail on pretty much everything. So I, I love working with other marketers. We speak the same language. It's much, it's much more of a natural conversation um, to build those trainings than to, like, have to go out and do, to, to, to your example, like keyword research as an SEO deliverable for some business that, like, I don't know anything about, I don't care about, you know, it's, I, I have no connection to, but I, I just really love other agency owners because we, we've been through the shit, the same thing. It's like a, like a, like a bond, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's just something that I was initially like, it, I, it was the easiest way for me to create content. And um, it ended up turning me into a very lucrative business offering um, through that. And yeah, I mean, like I, to me, if, if you ask me what the best business model in the world is, it's online trainings. <laughs> the best in the world.
Question from the audience is that you mentioned that SEO is a major revenue source for you. What are the up and coming profitable channels that you're looking at? Yeah. So at, at the agency from the future, uh, I would say SEO does 75%. Um, link building probably does another 20%. Um, actually, no, I'll probably speed off that now because we group. So I would say SEO probably does closer to 60%. Link building does close to 20%. Um, design and dev is something that we're growing very fast, but specifically on the UX side of things. So for those of you who are familiar with the nuances of UX versus UI, UX is, is the functionality of a website, uh, where things are, um, you know, conversion elements, stuff like that. Because we have such amazing marketers in-house, um, we've been able to bridge that gap between design, like what you see in terms of like colors, all that stuff, and hardcore like marketing action. So the marriage of those two is, is for, in our opinion, UX. Um, so our UX department is growing really, really fast. We're getting a lot of really large contracts from that because there's not many people in the market who have the, the level of acumen for marketing and tech that we have, plus the visual designers that we have. So we're doing a lot of really good work in that space. Um, we're picking up, I'm actually, I, I don't do operations, but I just signed a, a contract with a client who we're basically doing like, everything that you see me doing for the blueprint in terms of like um, advertising and like building that type of content, we're doing that for them. That to me, like I said, is the most impactful thing that businesses can do if you really want to generate like sales and attention quickly is um, like taking a more holistic approach to content um, and then knowing how to distribute it, right? So it's not just like a Facebook ads contract. It's actually more saying like, what are the, what are the four pillars to your business? What are the four things that your business needs to own from a topical and content point of view? And then underneath that, what are the distribution channels that that should live on? Should it be on Instagram? Should you be on YouTube? Um, should you be writing blog posts? So we'll build all that out. And then the final layer underneath that is the promotional element. So that's where SEO, in, in my opinion, is starting to come in. So it's like, um, okay, we're going to build blog content. SEO is the promotional channel for that blog content. So we're going to build links. We're going to you know do the on-page, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And then off of that too, it's like, oh, well, you have a big audience on Instagram. We're going to be building like a lot of 30 to 60 second videos. We're going to get influencers involved. We're going to boost those with ads. So basically that package um, is what I'm working now is turning into a deliverable based on, you know, my experience out there marketing the blueprint, which has been wildly successful, taking that and turn that into a, a client package, um, which also will incorporate like that. So basically like I'm trying to build this into a, an end to end um, just like marketing strategy uh, component that very few people are, are doing well end to end. Um, I see that as the, the next step in terms of what we're doing at the agency. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, that was good. That was, that, we're transitioning to that as well. You know, we, it's over the top SEO, but we want to incorporate social media. We want to clear, incorporate paid advertising. Yeah. There, so. Yeah. Yeah. So these uh, uh, methods that, that you use in the course that you offer, would you say they're more targeted towards struggling SEO agencies or is it really no, something that all SEOs would want? Yeah, I actually, so when I built it, it wasn't for struggling SEOs. What I thought was like what I really was going to market. I mean, most of my audience is, like I said, I, I know who they are. They're, they're not struggling. They're doing fine. They're just, they're looking to take that next leap. And they've never had the right coaching guides on how to do that because it's hard. Like most people don't know how to get from like 20K, 30K to 130K, 200K. It's, it's to me, that's the hardest jump in business. After you get to that, like where we are now at 400K a month, um, it's not the same problems. It, again, it becomes more about staffing, management, product, like all that stuff, right? Um, but what I originally built it for was for agencies like this who needed an internal training program, right? Like when you bring on somebody new, it's a pain in the ass to hire them. Like you had, like how do you how do you train them? You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't have internal guidance and documentation, that's what I originally built this for. And I still want to market it as that. But the first Q, so we just closed our first quarter, um, and our first quarter was really just heavily going after my audience and David's audience, letting them know what what the blueprint is. Um, you know, pushing out like the different stuff that's in it through advertising, um, and then just building like a really dope site that captures captures them and converts them. The next tranche of what we're doing is going to be going after that like struggling to scale agency. So we're starting to build some content around that. Um, so basically, it's it's built for it's built for any agency, right? I mean, you could be a hundred million dollar agency and want to use it. I don't think you need it, um, but like you could uh, like absolutely have it as your company's internal training guide. Right? Like the way that I built it was from the point of like somebody can just go in and watch it from like 
understanding from the point of like when a contract, even before that, like I'm building a marketing module now. So it's going to be like, how do you attract clients to your agency? How do you sell them? How do you onboard them? How do you build project plans? How do you kick off the work? And then going through all that stuff of every piece of that's in that SEO campaign. So I built it for, like I said, like as an intern, like just like how my agency used it. I didn't use it to sell it. I used it because I wanted to, to get my employees trained as quickly as possible and then hire even cheaper people because I had that stuff done. Um, so that was my original thought when building it because um, that's how it was built. But um, it's really for anyone. And we're just basically taking different marketing angles now. Every quarter, we're going to refresh our ads, refresh our content, refresh our refresh our targeting um, to go after different niches in the agency market. Like, I don't want to blanket and be like, this is for every agency. Every time we're going to change our marketing message slightly um, to speak specifically to that, to your point. So it's really for anyone. Yeah, that's what I was using the project management. Like we were bringing on project managers as we scaled and I was just giving them your stuff. <laughs> Here's how I want you to do it. We were implementing the sheets anyway, so it made sense yeah. to just hand in that. And it saved us a whole lot of time because it was the training was already there. It's already created. So. Exactly. I bet a lot of people don't understand the actual problem that you have from you get the client, you're doing the SEO. There is that gap of like, how do you start? You know, the client says, okay, here's two thousand dollars, here's a thousand dollars, here's whatever. Like, how do you actually get that going is a, is a really hard thing to to implement. And then having a, a gap or something like your program, this is how you bridge that gap. Actually, get in and run is, is pro that's probably worth yeah. the money right there. It's the little things, you know, it's, it's like I said, I mean, every single one of us who got into this industry, we didn't learn it in school, like, we learned how to do SEO, and knowing how to do SEO doesn't qualify you. To you know, and like most people, like now more people are learning it at agencies, so they're getting that experience. But I mean, I'm, I would, I'm arguing to bet everyone here didn't have that. We taught ourselves and then we had to figure out the business side of the back end. So uh, exactly that, like even little things that you just people just don't even know they exist. Like client onboarding is a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a very real and very important process that if you don't have you're shooting yourself and you're losing money. Like you can sell the contracts in the world, but if you can't get them on board and, and get projects kicked off properly, like you're going to lose them in, in the first 30 days. Um, and to your point, like these are things that people don't even, they don't even know they exist until they know it exists, you know? And that, that again, was like a big hole in the market that I was trying to fix was not like, I'm not trying to teach you how to go out and do like what all the other courses are doing, which is like really hardcore SEO. You know how to do that. I'd like, you know how to rank a website. I don't need to tell you that, but like what you probably don't know is how to manage that process end to end and then doing it at scale for 10, 20, 50, 100 clients. So you're managing your agency properly um, and you're doing it the right way. Uh, last question from the audience. Obviously, you knew this one was coming. Is Do you have any discount codes for the training? Um, I don't think so. Um, if you, if you guys hit me up on, um, I, I have to ask David, David handles all this stuff. Like we're, we're very segmented in our responsibilities in the business and <laughs> handles all support, um, tech, all that stuff. I just, I just make videos and, and advertise. Them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll, re I'll hit you up in the Slack group. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me know. I think there are some floating around. Okay. For sure. All right. And that's it, Ted. Nothing else in the audience. All right. Well, thank you very much. If people wanted to get a hold of you uh, with questions or to, to find out more about your products and services, how can they reach you? Yeah, you can uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. It's Ryan was here. Instagram, same thing. Um, my personal website, RyanWasHere.com, is probably the best place to find like everything that I'm involved in. Um, you can just Google my name too, Ryan Stewart. I've done a lot of time SEOing my name, so um, for that very reason. So if any of those, you'll find me. Great. Thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. This was awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ryan. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone.